Welcome to Ask Mark. This is episode 94, the show where I answer your questions that you so kindly leave in the comments section of all the videos. So if you do have a question for the next one, hashtag Ask Mark, hit the subscribe button with the little bell so you don't miss any new videos. And let's get into questions for today. I'm on the couch here, Lucy's here, she might drop in at some point. Matthew, yes. we've got some questions, sir. Yeah, love it, questions love it, love it, love it. First question is from Kate M. Oh, this is interesting. She says, how do you build strong boundaries and be vulnerable? I feel like I can be one or the other, more so from building firm boundaries now, but never both. I have boundaries, but no one is attracted to a woman who cannot be vulnerable. How do you integrate both traits? Uh, she says as a bonus, also Mark, you look uncannily like my brother. I always feel like I'm losing my mind when I watch your videos with how much you look like him. Wonder if we are related. I don't even know what to say to that, Kate. Uh, boundaries and vulnerability. This is a great question because we think that, oh, I have to have boundaries from a place of strength. It's like boundaries are putting up walls and fences, right? But we forget that any good fence, if it doesn't have a gate, is just gonna keep everyone out. But it's not about weakening the fence, it's about establishing a gate, right? And this is where sharing your truth, sharing how things make you feel, that all comes into it. You know, let's say you have a boundary that you don't want a partner hanging out with an ex, right? That's, that's just a boundary for you for whatever reason, you, you feel uncomfortable in your intuition with that relationship, right? You can do the full strong thing and say, you have to do this or this is my boundary, da da da. You can be the vulnerable thing uh, and get walked on and just say nothing. Well, that's not really the vulnerable thing, but you can say nothing and get walked on. Or you can do the vulnerable thing, which is to share openly and honestly how that makes you feel to him and why that's important to you. Vulnerability and boundaries, they go together. And we seem to have this general idea in society that to set a boundary, it has to be a big thick wall and the only way to set it up is more bricks and more concrete. But in fact, it's actually opening the gates at the end and saying, hey, this is what's real for me. This is how this is making me feel. This is why it's important to me. And then letting the other person decide, that's very important. Letting them decide if they wanna meet that boundary or not, that's how it comes from a place of vulnerability. Because a lot of, when people come from too much strength and when men or women come from too much strength, they're either keeping other people out entirely by saying, F you, that's a boundary of mine or they're not giving the other person the choice. They're saying, this is a boundary of mine, you have to do this. Which if I reach through the camera and say, this is a boundary of mine, you have to do this. You're like, bugger off, Mark. Why are you telling me what to do? Whereas if I say, hey, this is me. This is how what you're doing is making me feel. This is what's real for me. This is what's important to me. And it would mean a lot to me if we could do this or if we could arrange this or work together on this. But it's totally up to you. In the end, you get that full decision. I just want to share what's real for me. Vulnerability and boundaries absolutely go together. Second question is from Anne. And Anne says, what can I do if someone left me without a reason? I love to watch your vlog and I love you. Thank you, Anne. Look, Anne, I'm not sure the context of this. I don't know if this was one date or a year or what this really happened. But unfortunately, human beings are human beings. And ghosting, I mean, there can be a number of things. If it's a shorter term ghosting, if it happens early, it can just be the guy didn't want to hurt your feelings. It can be, and this isn't to excuse it, but there's all sorts of reasons that humans are humans and we don't have the courage at the time to speak up. In a longer relationship, it's often a chronic lack of speaking up that's built up over time that then actually just ends up in a ghosting. And a lot of people who say to me, the, the really bad ones where they say, oh, my boyfriend ghosted six months after being together or 12 months after being together, that is like the pinnacle of not speaking up expressed as an action, right? So if someone's ghosted you after like a year, I guarantee that that relationship started, problems started in that relationship eight or nine months earlier where someone wasn't speaking up and it just got so bad that no one was willing to confront it that the ghost was the end result. Humans are humans. Unfortunately, we don't act in our highest values all of the time and we have a, each of us has our own fears. And especially if you're out there dating, you've got to remember that. It's very rarely about you. Uh, but if it has been a longer time and if you have known someone longer, it can often be a sign that there was a chronic problem that just kind of came to a head. And unfortunately that was the result. So good feedback on your relationship if it's happened that way. Otherwise, check in on what you've done and any way you might've contributed, but don't take it personally. 
I've been ghosted, you'll get ghosted. All of us have been ghosted at some point and it's very rarely about you, especially early on. Third question is from Sajultia, Sajulita. So if he would say I was meeting with someone else, show him my back. Uh, this is what to do when a ghost returns. I mean, yeah, you can. He's allowed to meet with others and you can just decide what you do with that information. That's really up to you. Dillion Girl 72 says, question, where does going down on them fail? Thanks for info, hashtag winning. Where does going down on them fail? Matthew, <laughs> help out with this one. When does it fail? When does going down on them fail? I would imagine that it's a failure if the person that is receiving is not enjoying the experience, but feels, uninhib or feels inhibited or unable to speak up about it. Because sex fails all the time, oral sex fails all the time, that's okay, we all do it, we've all done a bad job or received a bad job. But when you can't give that feedback and you can't correct, I would say that's when it fails. Uh, Alicia says, wonderfully explained, this is on how to find a boyfriend video. Thank you. I have a question. Can we apply standards in getting to know a person without realizing it? Can we apply standards in getting to know a person without them realizing it? Right, uh, absolutely, absolutely. I'd say 90% of this is your own actions. You can't, absolutely. People feel it in your actions 100%. It comes across as the way that if they, for example, uh, stop investing in you, you get kind of like disinterested. You're like, well, if that person's not really gonna show up for me, then mm, they're gonna kind of lose me, right? People feel that energy. People can feel the energy of challenge. And by challenge, I don't mean making a fake challenge pretending to be high value or pretending to not be available. By challenge, I mean, if you've got your friends that you're hanging out with, or you've got a work thing to do, and, and you do it, and you keep that priority, that shows that that person is not the number one priority, at least at that moment in your life. And that creates a natural challenge for them, something to work towards. And that's a standard because if they can't budge you on that, then they feel a certain strength from you, right? And they are not thinking, oh, she's trying to set a standard here. It just happens naturally. So a hundred percent, hundred percent. This, in fact, I'd say virtually all of applying standards is done without them consciously realizing it. They just feel that. They feel that you're not bending for them. They feel that they've got to work to impress you and to keep you. Absolutely. And the next question is from Nora Cat. Uh, Nora Cat says, are blind dates a good idea for long relationships? I actually have very little experience with them. So if you've had an experience, put it in the comments section. I don't have a problem with them. I think they're kind of fun and interesting. They're somewhat of a crapshoot, but you know, if you've got an afternoon, why not get to know another human being? Bit of fun, keep you on your toes, practice your social skills. I don't see you have much to lose. Uh, number two, can an honest conversation of what I want and my interests and expectations on the first date save me time? Appreciate your efforts. Uh, it certainly can. You've just got to be a bit careful not to put your agenda on the person. Which is to say, if I show up to a first date with you and I start sharing my expectations for future relationships, especially if you get the vibe that it's with you, you're going to feel like, well, why am I part of Mark's plan? Mark doesn't really know me. He's coming forward a lot here and making a lot of assumptions and I'm just here because I wanted to enjoy a spritzer. It's a lot. If I was gonna share on the first date, you can, sh you can share your passions, what you're going for, but the person should still feel like they are not part of that plan. Because as soon as a guy or a girl feels like they're just part of a plan, they feel used. You're gonna feel used. If I show up to a date and I'm like, yeah, I want to have kids by this time, I want to do this, and, and you feel like I'm putting my agenda on you, you're just going to feel like you're part of my plan, you're going to feel used, and you're going to run the other way. So by all means, discuss what you want, um, especially if you are trying to move things a bit sooner and bust people out sooner, by all means. If, if you say, yeah, no, one of my visions is I want, I want family in the next few years, I'm really excited for it, you know, i got to find the right person, obviously, but that's something I'm working towards. He might take that hint and be like, yeah, I'm looking for casual, this is not my person. That's great. But I'd be careful about putting your agenda onto the other person. Uh, Anna says, but how to deal with men who are calling friendly behaviors neediness? I really like this question. It's on the signs you are needy video. Uh, I met such people and only because I was very friendly, they took me to such 
box without any real feeling of my neediness from my side. Uh, I don't really get that. Is it nar it's narcissistic behavior or how to deal with neediness with men who are calling friendly behavior neediness? People are going to call you whatever they want throughout your life. They're going to say stuff. They're going to make their judgments. And this is where you have to be centered and solid and say, look, if this isn't needy behavior from me, if I'm pretty comfortable that I'm just being friendly here, screw what they say, man. Got to check in with yourself. Uh, who else we got? Muskan says, which dating sites would you recommend for singles in Africa? I actually don't know. I'd have to do some research on that. I'll see if I can find a thing from the comment section. I don't know. Do you know, do you know any African dating sites, Matthew? Look, my default is always Tinder. And I like Tinder because you have numbers. And online is a meeting service. It's not a dating service. You can't date online. You just need a good meeting service so that you can connect and then form human connections from there. So by default, and maybe it's not Tinder, but by default, go to the one with the most users. And final question is from Deepa. Uh, Deepa says, my husband always wants me to lead. Interesting. In everything, including intimacy. So annoying. Women want to feel needed, loved. Anything wrong with that? No, absolutely. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I know a lot of women share this feeling with you, Deepa. They want the men to lead. They want men to step up. And unfortunately, because of culture, family, whatever it is, a lot of men have been conditioned not to. So this is a good opportunity for you guys to build intimacy. This is a good opportunity for you guys to bond. I think there's gonna be some work for the two of you to do because this has obviously been happening for a while, which means it hasn't been something that's addressed by you and it's likely something that was kind of built into him before he came to relationship. And this is where the two of you have a difficult but potentially incredibly fulfilling opportunity to actually grow through your fears together and become closer. He can step into the man that he has the potential to be and you can step into the feminine energy and the woman, the still assertive but feminine, receptive, let him lead woman, that's beyond your fears as well. So those are the questions for today. Thank you for joining me. Post yours in the comment section below and don't forget to hashtag Ask Mark when you do. Hit the subscribe button with the little bell. You have to hit the bell so you get the notifications. And don't forget to grab a copy of my book. I don't have one on the couch here. Matthew's looking for the book. Oh, there is one. Grab a copy. Uh, it's bloody fantastic. 250, 70, 80. No, it's 300 pages. Over 320 pages of goodness <laughs> in the book. There you go. I didn't know how many pages are in my own book. I definitely wrote it. It wasn't a ghostwriter. I know that's what you're thinking. I definitely wrote it. It was a lot of pages actually in the end, but it's all good stuff. So check it out, link in the description for that. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video very soon.